as we're back for the second part of this, you should have used a Sharpie to trace. And I um, wanted to point out that these are definitely way too wide for this. So don't use the fine Sharpies. You want something that's either ultra fine or just a black ink pen would probably work. I have traced everything on here, but the one thing I need to do <clears throat> before I start painting and coloring is to get rid of all the extra pencil lines. So I actually need to go in here and you can see I have a lot of pencil that I needed to get rid of. And, and the one thing about doing this is like if you erase, oh look, I didn't actually trace the top of my head there. So as you're erasing all your extra pencil lines, you might find a place where you missed um, with the Sharpie and that's that's a good thing to catch that now before you start painting. So go ahead and take an eraser, erase everywhere that you think you see pencil, right? Because we want to get rid of all that. And then if you have any places you missed, which I'm actually noticing that I did, oh, I'm going to go back to my I could leave this because this is the unfinished part, but I'm not going to. I'm going to draw that in, okay? Now, I want you to consider mixing mediums, okay? One medium we're going to use today is the color pencil, and the other one is watercolor, okay? Color pencil because when you're doing really detailed um, things, you may want to use that for some of the really skinny things. Um, and then watercolor because we're going to be doing the backgrounds. You could do the whole thing in watercolor if you want, or you can just do part of it. Um, if you think you're going to have trouble getting the correct colors um, with the colored pencils, because I am a little bit limited here. I was looking like for skin color. I'm going to have to use this one and just press really light. Or for me, it actually is easier if I just use the brown here and add extra water. So um, if I have a clean um, ink tr or paint tray here, which I don't, let me make a little spot here and work this out a little bit. One of the things that you can do for skin color is you put a little bit of brown in there, add some white, and then if you're not sure if it's the right color, this is where a piece of scratch paper comes in. You can just paint on it and see, does that look right? Do I need it to be a little warmer? If you need it to be warmer, add a little bit of yellow or orange. Usually orange, really. Oh, I kind of like that color. Then you want to look at your skin. Does that look like my skin? Well, kind of. Might need a little more brown. Okay. How about that one? That's closer. So if you hold your skin up next to it, does it look like your skin? Now that one almost looks like it might be, it looks better to me over here than there, so I might need to put a little bit more water in there. And that might be pretty close. Although I can tell I picked up a little bit of green here, so this may <laughs> just changed it. Okay, I like that color. I think that's good. Now, the tricky part is if I'm going to use this, I have to be so careful that I don't get it in my eyes, um, that I only get it where I want my skin color to be. So as you're doing this, when you're painting here, as you're going around your eyes, I want you to be very careful that you don't get it in your eyes. Okay, so go slow. Just use the very tip of your brush. Even for Mrs. Walker, this is tricky because if I just do one slight stroke too far, or even if I have too much water on my brush, it'll go into my eyes, won't it? So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Oh wait, I was going to leave this black and white. Well, I guess this could be in progress, right? Maybe I'll only do the skin color on there. The rest isn't done. Okay? I guess it's up to you. So I've got the skin color. What else am I missing? My hands, right? My hands would need to be this color. We'll color my hands and then I can switch to something else okay now if you feel like your hair is going to be too hard to do with um, colored pencil you could do paint or you can mix maybe I want to start by putting some some lines in my hair here and then I could always paint over it right so I know I have blonde hair so I could put some yellow in there but mine is definitely not this color of blonde and I wonder I wasn't going to do it on that painting there um, I have some brown highlights in my hair so I could do some lines the reason I'm saying colored pencil for this is like for paint, it's I'm not going to be able to get these really fine lines in here, am I? So you may want to do a little bit of both, okay? And then for the background, just have fun. Make it as colorful and wonderful as you want. You saw the examples. Um, let's see here. I think I might use, I don't know, maybe a little more yellow to this going to be interesting. I probably better sample it on here and see what it looks like. Oh yeah, that's pretty close actually. 
So then go ahead and just paint that in. Paint your clothes or color them with colored pencils, your choice, but we are not using any marker on this, okay? No marker. Now, if I want my frame to be a dark brown, I can just mix in some black, right? Make that a nice dark brown frame. Uh, you do need to take your time, though. This is very fine, detailed painting. If I want this to be a straight line, I just got to really take my time. If I'm painting it, if you're doing it with colored pencils, it's a little easier to stay in those lines, right? With paint, not only do you have to be careful that you paint it correctly, but then you also have to be careful that you don't have so much water that it runs somewhere you don't want it to go. Um, I'm noticing I'm getting really close to my hair right here. If my hair is still wet, which it is, and this is wet and it gets next to it, could the black, <clears throat> the dark brown run into the hair? Yeah, so you might, I probably should have waited to go that close until I know that that one's dry. It doesn't take too long to dry if you're not using super wet <clears throat> paint. If you're using a lot of water in your brush not that I'm using a lot of water in the color I'm mixing but if I, my brush is loaded up too much with uh, water then it might be likely to run into that more likely okay so you don't want to you don't want to overload it how do you get some of the water out of your brush yeah so if I go into this and I'm afraid that has too much just brushing it against the edge of the tray like this will take some of it out if you've dipped it in the water and you want to take some out, you just brush it against. If you've dipped it in the water, just brush it against the edge of your water dish here, um, like this, and that'll get some of the water off so that you're not getting so much. I'm just going to stop that little notification there. Okay? All right. Um, have fun and enjoy painting. Take your time. Really put some effort into this. Remember, you're welcome to go all colored pencil all watercolor or a combination of both i hope you'll experiment with a combination of both but i really do want you to do whatever you think will turn out best for yours okay because that's what really matters ultimately is that you get it the way you want it okay here we go again all right